Thank you for staying with us. Uh, we have now come to the closing section of the conference, the next chapter. Uh, it is my honor to welcome the Connecticut State Librarian, Maureen Sullivan, to help us to sum up today's uh, program, to Learning. Maureen. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm going to start by taking us back to some of the key comments that, that were made by Trevor Dawes in his opening statement. He began by taking us through a thought process based on his experience at the University of Delaware and that sacred land. But what it reminded me of is so much of the work that we do is focused on getting things done today. And we don't often stop and think about our roots, our history, and the importance of understanding those who came before us. And yet in our field, especially when we're looking at this question, do we have true resource sharing? It's really important to recognize all of the individuals and the work that has brought us to where we are today. This is a field that has valued resource sharing, cooperation and collaboration in a way that many other fields have not. And I know this from personal experience and people who ask me the question, what is it about people who work in libraries that causes them to want to work together as much as they do? I really appreciated it when Trevor answered his own question and affirmed for us that true resource sharing is here, it's a part of the work that we do. I also appreciated the fact that he brought in our interest in social justice and the importance of taking an anti-racism stance because I think as we move ahead to do the work that lies in the future around resource sharing, one of the things that we're going to have to be more effective at is really valuing diversity and working toward inclusion among us and to do that in the broadest sense. He also talked about the importance of empathy as a leadership skill and gave us a really fine list of skills and abilities that are important now for resource sharing. And it seemed to me that everything on his list is going to be important for the future. The particular one that I would highlight is developing the capacity to engage in project management on a very large scale. So for each of us to be thinking about what is it that we can bring to a project and how can we do that effectively? I think resource sharing today is more important than it has ever been. And while Trevor talked this morning about change being a way of life in libraries, I think all of us recognize it's really the one constant in our lives more broadly. And we, as people who work in libraries, have proven over the course of our history, and I think particularly in the last several months, that when we're faced with challenge and adversity, it prompts us to be more creative and to be more intentional in working together. And I'm really hoping as everyone who has participated in this program today, those of you who are left, I've been noticing that we're dropping our membership, but that everyone is ready to think more intentionally about where there are different opportunities for sharing our resources. And as several of our presenters have talked today, it is the broad perspective on what these resources are. It's our collections, it's our services like delivery, interlibrary loan, it's programming that we do so effectively. But one of the most important that I think has only recently been getting, been getting the kind of attention that it needs is to recognize the opportunity to share the intellectual capacity of the staff who are working in our libraries and to capitalize on the creative work that is being done and to think broadly about how it is that we can work together to develop the skills and abilities that Trevor set forth in his opening remarks. There was a point where I made a note as well, somebody was talking about boundaries. We're really benefited in New England by the close proximity among our six states. And we have the New England Library Association as one example of where those six states have come together. I think there's a great opportunity for more intentional thinking and work to take place being inclusive of states beyond the one in which we work. But I also believe that this work going forward is gonna require some effort on our part. And as I've been indicating, I think it's important to be clear about what our strengths are 
and to build upon those strengths. The value of collaboration that most of us hold, our very strong service orientation, our deep interest in solving problems, particularly in the face of challenges like an increasingly digital context, the challenges that publishers bring to us, the changing expectations and the changing membership of our communities. It is important to look for opportunities for partnership, but when we do that, we have to be prepared to really do the hard work to understand our differences in our needs and in our interests, and to really be very clear about what the compelling interests are that might bring us together. We need to learn to practice what a woman who was doing her work several decades ago, her name is Khalil Jamison, and she came up with this principle of straight talk. And I'm seeing an increasing need for those of us in our field to develop the capacity to think in a positive joining mindset where we're willing to be open, to assume that we have positive intent among us and to respect others enough to be honest with them. My leadership development work persuades me that most of us need more practice and need to become more skillful in speaking up and expressing not just our difference in perspective and ideas, but our difference in preferences and style as we work together. And all of this is gonna require being more effective at negotiating so that as we are looking for those places where we can be more creative and more innovative in resource sharing, that we are doing this work where we see our diversity as a talent as a capacity to be nurtured and brought forth. I'm actually an individual who could imagine a future in which we have a national digital platform. And that platform is designed so that it enables all of those who are working in libraries to become what uh, John Palfrey once described as the human network of librarians who are really curating and ensuring that our communities receive the information that they need. I was really pleased as the day went forth that we were considering academic libraries, but we were also giving more consideration to school and public libraries. I think there's great opportunity for us to work across type of library and to be thinking more intentionally about how all of us can share our resources, particularly our knowledge and intellectual capacity to improve the kind of services that we're providing. And I think the increasing expectation that we're going to be doing more of our work through telework or the virtual experience really strengthens the need for us to nurture and make sure that we are continuing this true resource sharing that has been the theme for the conference today. It's been a privilege for me to be a part of it. And I would ask each of you as we're closing this, you've invested the day as a couple of our speakers have reminded us. And I would ask each of you to give some thought to where are you currently in a position to share resources? Where are there opportunities to do this that aren't being pursued now? And what would be one step that you could take to move forward so that we would be increasing those opportunities for resource sharing. And I'll close with that and invite you to do that kind of thinking and to look forward to your next opportunity to address this very important topic. Thank you. Thank you very much, Maureen, for those very thoughtful and encouraging remarks and, and especially for bringing us full circle back to, uh, so eloquently back to um, Trevor's important remarks that he spoke about this morning. Um, this has been a long, but we hope insightful and productive day for everyone. In closing, I wanna be sure to thank our virtual host, Warwick Public Library, and especially Evan Barda for running such a smooth conference and letting us crash your Zoom party today. Thank you again to Maureen Sullivan of Connecticut State Library, James Lonergan of the Massachusetts Board of Library Commissioners, and Karen Meller of the Rhode Island Office of Library and Information Services, not only for their meaningful remarks today, but for their tireless leadership and all the hard work that they and their teams do to support libraries and communities. Thanks again to the IMLS grant funding made available through the Connecticut State Library, 
to our wonderful keynote speaker, Trevor A. Dawes, and to all of our speakers and panelists who put so much thought and effort into making this day a success. And thank you most of all to our audience for joining us. You came from near and far and we're really blown away by your enthusiasm and your dedication, your great questions. Presenter resources and session recordings will be made available on the conference website as soon as possible. Don't forget to continue sharing about the conference on social media using hashtag sharing visions 2020. I've seen some great stuff already and be sure to watch for and return your conference evaluations. On behalf of the entire conference planning committee, thank you for attending, stay safe and keep on sharing. Have a good afternoon, everyone.